Okay, hi everybody. Uh, we put a lot of work into changing the problem of finding the optimal margin hyperplane into the problem of finding the closest point in two convex sets. And now we're going to try to solve that problem. Uh, it's not a straightforward problem, actually. It still takes a lot of work to do. And as a first step, we're going to uh, pose this precisely as a constrained optimization problem. And it takes a little bit of massaging to get the problem into a form where we can solve it. And so this lecture is a little bit technical, but um, it will get us into a position where we can finally explain an algorithm for solving this problem. OK, so let's remember for the last time, not the last time, what the, uh, what the problem is that we're trying to solve. We have two linearly separable sets of points, a plus and a minus in RK. A plus has n plus points. A minus has n minus points. And our goal is to find points P and Q in their convex hulls, which are as close as possible among all points in their convex hulls. So we want to minimize the distance from P to Q as P and Q vary over all points in the convex hulls of the two sets A plus and A minus. Now, um, remember what the con that we have a sort of a nice internal description of what the convex hull is of a set of points. The convex hull of A plus or minus is the collection of points sum lambda i plus or minus, i goes from 1 to n plus or minus, xi plus or minus, subject to the condition that the sum of the lambda i's is 1, and all of the coefficients are bigger than or equal to 0. So we can make our problem of finding the closest points concrete by writing down a formula, w of lambda plus lambda minus, for the vector which joins a point in the convex hull of C of A, in the convex hull of A plus, that's this point, with a point in the convex hull of A minus, that's that point, taking the norm of that vector, and our, so if you were think want a little picture here, here's the one convex hull, here's the other convex hull. This point varies over this region. This point varies over this region. And as we consider all possible lambda pluses and lambda minuses, we're looking for the two points that are as close together as possible. So our optimization problem is to find these coefficients, lambda plus and minus, which minimize the distance or the squared distance, either one. And the conditions are that all of the lambda pluses have to be bigger than, I plus or minuses have to be bigger than or equal to zero. And the sum of the lambda I plus and the sum of the lambda I minus both have to be one. Now let's make a few observations about this problem. The first observation is that the function w of lambda plus I should say it's norm, the norm squared of w of lambda plus lambda minus, is actually a quadratic function in all of these variables lambda with coefficients involving the dot products of the xi plus or minus. And to see why that's true, if you write down what w of lambda plus lambda minus squared is, it's the dot product of the sum of lambda i plus xi plus minus the sum of lambda i minus x i minus with itself. And if you expand this out, which I, you'll notice that you're going to get just pairs of lambdas. The typical term is going to be a pair of lambdas, maybe lambda i plus or minus lambda j plus or minus, and then the dot product of the corresponding x's. This is a typical term. And remember that the xi's are given. So these uh, function as the coefficients. And so uh, the, the function that we're trying to minimize is a quadratic function in the lambdas. Now, we might have a 1,000 points or even a million points in each of our two sets. So we could have millions of variables. But even if we have millions of variables, at least we can be consoled by the fact that the degree of the polynomial is only 2. 
The next thing to notice is that the constraints we have to deal with are inequalities rather than equalities, or actually they're a mixture. So the constraints are that the sum of the lambda i pluses have to equal 1, the sum of the lambda i minuses have to equal 1. That's okay. Those are equality constraints. But then we have these constraints that all of the lambdas have to be bigger than or equal to 0. And in our um, earlier discussion of constrained optimization, we only had equality. And in that situation, we could use Lagrange multipliers. But Lagrange multipliers isn't set up initially to deal with inequality constraints. And there is a huge theory of a generalization of Lagrange multipliers which does deal with inequalities. And there are whole courses taught on the subject. It's called convex optimization. Um, but rather than embark on a big discussion of that theory, we're going to give a direct proof of the algorithm for finding our closest points. But if you go farther in the study of optimization, you will lear learn about convex optimization and see that there's actually a generalization of Lagrange multipliers that applies. But instead, we're going to give an iterative algorithm due to John Platt and introduced in 1998 called sequential minimal optimization. So this is relatively new work, goes back only to 1998. And now comes the technical part of this talk, which is that, um, in fact, we're not going to solve the optimization problem that I just described. We're going to tinker with it slightly. So I want to consider a slightly different constrained optimization problem. And it looks like this. I'm going to define a function q. It's again a function of the lambda pluses and the lambda minuses, just like before. And it's gotten by taking the original objective function, which is the norm of this w, the distance between the two sets, and subtracting the sum of the lambda pluses and the sum of the lambda minuses. And I'm so that's the modified objective function. And the modified constraints are Instead of requiring that the sum of the lambda i pluses be 1 and the sum of the lambda i minuses be 1 and all the lambdas be bigger than or equal to 0, I'm going to require that all the lambdas are bigger than or equal to 0 and the sum of the lambda pluses equals the sum of the lambda minuses, but maybe not necessarily 1, as long as it's positive. And I'm going to call this sum alpha. And I guess the thing to notice is that if you have a solution to um, q of lambda plus q of lambda to the to the function q of lambda plus if you have a if you have a collection of lambdas which satisfy these constraints, then if you scale them by one over alpha, you get not a solution. Well, the, what I'm going to prove is that you actually get a solution to the original problem. So, to recap, we solved this slightly different problem where we've modified the objective function and the constraints. We take that solution, we take our lambdas, and we divide them all by alpha. The result is going to be um, a collection of alphas that sum to 1 instead of summing to alpha. And it's going to turn out that's a solution to our original optimization problem. So how do we see this? Well, there are three sets of, point, three sets of points that we have to worry about. We have the original lambda plus and lambda minus, which we assume solve problem 2. Two, so they give the minimum value for q. And we assume that we have little sigma plus sigma minus, which are another set of points which solve problem 1. So these minimize w of sigma plus sigma minus squared, and the sum of the sigma i plus is the sum of the sigma i minuses is, is equal to 1. And then finally, we have we take our lambda plus lambda minus and we divide by alpha, and that gives us a third set of numbers. And what we're going to show by some inequalities is that all these numbers are the same. So um, how does that work? So first of all, um, tau plus and tau minus, which we got by taking our solution to problem two and rescaling them, still satisfy the constraints of this problem. I mean, they still satisfy that the sum of the lambda i pluses equals the sum of the lambda i minuses. Now they satisfy a further condition that it's equal to 1, but that doesn't matter. So because they satisfy the constraints of problem 2, and lambda plus lambda minus gives you the minimum value of q, 
then you know that the value of q at that point has to be smaller than the value at tau. So this is q of lambda plus lambda minus. This is q of tau plus tau minus. And since tau plus tau minus satisfy the constraints, and if you look at the function here, it's minus the sum. For tau, that's 1. But for lambda, it's alpha. Then this number q has to be smaller than this. On the other hand, as I mentioned before, tau plus and tau minus satisfy the constraints of problem 1 because all their coefficients are bigger than or equal to 0 and the positive lambdas and the positive taus and the negative taus sum to 1. And w is the minimum v value for that problem. So the value at tau squared has to be bigger than or equal to the value at sigma plus and sigma minus. So now we want to somehow put these two sets of inequalities together. And the way we do that is we use scaling. And the thing to notice is that w of alpha sigma plus alpha sigma minus is alpha squared w sigma plus sigma minus. And that's because, remember what w is, it's a dot product like this of a vector with itself. And if you multiply the vector by alpha, which is what would happen if you multiplied all of the sigmas by alpha, the dot product goes up by alpha squared. So this shows you that w alpha sigma plus alpha sigma minus is alpha squared w sigma plus sigma minus. And if I go back to my inequality, which tells me that w of tau plus tau minus is bigger than or equal to w of sigma plus sigma minus, then it's also true that w of alpha, this is just alpha squared, I multiply both sides of that inequality by alpha squared. I move the alpha inside, but remember that alpha tau plus or minus is lambda plus or minus. So now I have the inequality that w of lambda plus or minus squared is bigger than or equal to w of alpha sigma plus alpha sigma minus. And now I subtract 2 alpha from both sides of this inequality, and I get this equation. Now, um, the right-hand side, this is the minimum possible value for q among variables that meet the constraints. And alpha sigma plus, alpha sigma minus uh, meet those constraints because the original sigmas sum to 1, and they're all bigger than or equal to 0. So if you multiply them by alpha, they sum to alpha, so they sum to the same thing, and they're still bigger than or equal to 0. And so the alpha sigma plus alpha sigma minus also satisfy the constraints. And if this is smaller than the minimum value, then it has to be equal. So in other words, these two sides have to actually be equal. And then if you strike out the two alpha, cancel the two alphas, you go back to the previous inequality and you get that alpha squared involving times w of sigma plus sigma minus is alpha squared times the norm of w tau plus or tau minus. And you cancel the alpha and you end up showing that w of sigma plus sigma minus squared is w of tau plus tau minus squared. In other words, the solution that we found from problem two gives the same minimum value as the solution that we were looking for for problem one. And for a variety of reasons, problem two is more convenient to work with. And so that's the problem that we are going to solve uh, in the next lecture.